Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at box plot diagrams so we can answer questions from exercise 3b. So hopefully you've seen this before at GCSE. A box plot diagram will look something like this. It will contain the markers at five key points of a data set. It has the smallest value, the largest value, the lower quartile, the median and the upper quartile. Okay, so these five key points out of a data set are marked onto a diagram and it clearly shows in a nice, um, in a nice way um, how our data is represented. Any outliers are used with a cross on the diagram and if there is more than one outlier then there will be more than one cross. Okay, so each section of this data represents 25% of the observations. Okay, so in section A we saw this data here about the blood glucose levels of 30 female people. Um, from the data set we already worked out that uh, Q1 was 3.2, Q2 is 3.8, remember Q2 the second quarter is effectively the median, and Q3 is 4.0. Outliers were 2 and 5.2. So outliers were less than 2 and greater than 5.2. So represent this on a box plot. So what we would do first is put a little marker um, at the smallest value that was not outlier. So we knew that the outlier for 1.7 was an outlier. So the next value from there is 2.2. .2, so we'll put a marker there and a marker at 5.1, which was the highest value. Markers at the quarter waypoints. And then we'll just connect all those up, making a box with the three middle uh, points and then whiskers effectively out to the lowest and highest value and then put a little cross at the outline okay so that's a really basic way of drawing a box plot diagram and indeed they are a basic topic within a-level maths so another set of data gives us uh, blood glucose levels for males and they give us this data here so plot that and we'll have a look at how we can compare data using a um, box plot diagram. Now here um, we knew that the lowest value was 1.4 and the highest value was 5.2 and we could work out here that the um, outliers were from 1.95 up to 6.35 and anything outside that range would be an outlier. Now given that 1.4 the lowest value would be outside of this uh, range of um, accepted data we'd have to put a marker across at 1.4 and because we don't know what the next um, what the next lowest value is going to be, we don't know it would be 1.96, we don't know it would be 2, we put a line at 1.95. So if we don't know the next highest piece of data from those outliers, then we put the mark at the outlier mark, um, just like we've done with the males here. All right then, so now we can compare our set of data. Now what we can say here is we're gonna compare the data in two different ways, the average and the spread of our data. So what we can say here is that uh, based on this data, females have a lower median blood glucose level and a smaller interquartile range. This means that the levels are more consistent and at a lower level than males. So what it's done there is it's compared the median out of our set of data and the interquartile range out of our set of data and then um, translated it back to what the question was looking at. It says that um, because of the lower interquartile range it was more consistent and had a lower level than males in terms of blood glucose. Okay, so it's really important that you compare the median, you compare the range of the spread of data by the interquartile range and then you link it back to the original um, context of the question and it's always use it like that right then so have a go yourself then pause the video and try this question out All right then, so here we have a question about the masses of male and female turtles are given in grams. Their masses are summarised on in the box plots. Compare and contrast the masses of the male and female uh, turtles. 
So what we can say here is that the median um, weight of male turtles is greater than females showing that they are on average heavier so that's comparing the medians and then we can say that the female interquartile range and you can write IQR that is a standard notation for interquartile range the female interquartile range is smaller therefore females have a more consistent weight Okay, so that is how we would uh, compare the weights of turtles there. Uh, we wouldn't even dream of doing that, comparing weight with human beings, obviously. Okay, moving on to part B. Uh, a turtle was found to have a mass of 330 grams. State whether it is likely to be a male or female, given a reason for your answer. So it has a weight of 330 so that's a little marker at this point here. Okay, I would say that, uh, having look and looked at this data here, that because 25% of the female data is in this very small mark that contains 330, there's a higher probability that it's in this very small region of the diagram here, rather than the 25% of data that's in this very large region here. So I would definitely say female as 25% of females have a weight in between. Now what we're assuming here in this answer is that we have the same amount of males and females. Um, has a weight in between 305 and 318, uh, between 305 and 308. Now, with these sorts of questions here, if I've read the diagram ever so slightly wrong, then the uh, invigilator will give me um, benefit of the doubt and will give me a little range of values to get my answer correct there. So not 308, um, it would be 338. Because each little marker is 20 grams. Yeah, that's right. Okay, write down the size of the largest female turtle. Well, we have one female turtle here that has a weight at 500 grams. And this turtle is an outlier. Okay, right. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, have a go at exercise 3B if you need to. Uh, otherwise, um, thanks very much for watching.